This is an A-level revision video on standing waves by Andrew Denton. Let's go over the basics of what waves are. They are physical oscillations or vibrations of a particle that transfer energy with no bulk movement of matter. So although they oscillate either transversely or longitudinally, so perpendicular or parallel to the motion of the energy, the movement of the particle itself and the distance it travels is very very small when compared to the distance that the energy will travel. Waves can also be described by the wave equation which is velocity equals wavelength times frequency which al algebraically is V equals lambda times F. Also the oscillation vibrations obey simple harmonic motion so when we draw a graph of them showing the displacements we form a sine wave. The important bits of information in this presentation will be on a yellow background. This is because studies have shown dark blue or black writing on a yellow background helps people with dyslexia to read it and memorize it. I hope this helps. Now let's think about how standing waves are made. The red and blue wave are moving in opposite directions with the amplitude, frequency and speed. The resultant wave of these two waves is the pink wave on top. As you can see, there are areas of maximum amplitude on the numbers and areas where there seems to be no amplitude at all at 1.5, 2.5 and so on. Now you may think that the wave isn't moving, however the wave, as you can see, the two separate waves are still moving, but the resultant wave appears not As that video showed, standing waves are a result of the superposition of two waves with the same amplitude and frequency travelling at the, exactly the same speed but in opposite direction. This makes them coherent. The waves are moving but the same places have a very large amplitude while other places have zero amplitude, so continuous destructive interference. They can also be achieved by reflecting a wave back upon itself as therefore the wave would be, cohe be coherent because it would be the same wave interfering with itself. An easy way to visualize a standing wave is to imagine waves upon a string. If we fix two ends of a string and then pluck the middle and allow it to oscillate freely, then the part in the middle forms an antinode and the two fixed ends create nodes no possible movement, while antinodes show an area of maximum amplitude. Because only half a wavelength is allowed to form, it's very simple to work out when a violin, for say, is being plucked at its fundamental, to work out how long the wavelength of the sound actually is. Because all you have to do is double the length of the distance of the string. Now if you were to pinch the middle, you can create the second harmonic by plucking the string again. However, by pinching the middle, this forces a node, much similar to the way the interference forced a node. And so now the length between the two fixed ends is one wavelength. And you get two antinodes and nodes. This can continue. Um, and until you see the bottom diagram here which shows the fourth harmonic which has four antinodes and five notes. So let's go over the important points picked up there. A node is a point of minimal or zero amplitude, antinode is a point of maximum amplitude, and a stationary standing wave requires interfering waves having the same amplitude and frequency. Now let's imagine waves in a tube. In a tube, a closed end and opened end act as the ends of the string, as they both get reflected upon. However, at a closed end, it is impossible for the air to move in one direction, as it's a longitudinal wave, and so acts as a node. However, open end, 
it is it can move to its maximum potential and so these form antinodes however both can reflect so if you blow across a pipe let's imagine a flute blow across it both ends are open however the sound is created with a standing wave because both ends reflect if you were to increase the pitch of the sound then you would increase the frequency in the tube and get the tube to resonate at say three times the fundamental or five times the fundamental varying the number of nodes and antinodes in the tube let's try an example question which you may have to answer in your exam the air in a three meter organ pipe is resonating at a fundamental frequency organ pipes are effectively open at both ends what is the wavelength of the sound and how many nodes and antinodes does it have well as the question tells us it's in its fundamental frequency we know that there's only half a wavelength occurring in the pipe itself so therefore to, to work out the wavelength all you have to do is 3 times 2 so 6 meters and to work out the nodes and antinodes as it said it's open at both ends so it has two antinodes and one node to incorporate the half wavelength these are the references of the video and images I have used in my presentation let's end with the Rubens tube a Rubens tube is a classic physics experiment to demonstrate standing waves enclosed at both ends tube the Rubens tube is a length of pipe with a row of holes along it at one end is sealed with a membrane that can vibrate with sound and at the other is a flammable gas supply in my demonstra demonstration I use methane the gas is allowed to leak out of the holes where it is ignited when a sound is played through the speaker at the membrane end it will, the membrane will resonate with the sound causing vibrations in the gas which are carried through the pipe these are then reflected off the other end back upon itself causing interference creating a standing wave this will create places which vary in pressure the antinodes and areas of constant pressure the nodes at the antinodes less gas will escape due to the varying pressure while at the nodes more gas will escape producing higher flames the number of peaks is controlled by pitch and the height of the flames is controlled by the volume and the gas speed most importantly 